大家好 I'm Nathan Rich, aka 火锅大王 Today I want to talk to you a little bit about COVID-19 and panic. You know, I've been accused of a lot of things in my life, especially for making these videos. When I first started, I didn't think it would be so controversial to make a video that said, "Oh, I love it here. This is a great country." But for some reason, there's a lot of people out there who think that that's the craziest thing ever to say. I was reading an article the other day about a prison riot in Colombia. Five thousand prisoners tried to get out of prison because they were terrified of the coronavirus getting them. During this prison riot, at least 23 of them died. Now, these numbers are kind of interesting because if you figure out the percent of them that died, it's basically exactly the same as if they had all gotten COVID-19. In fact, it might have even been higher, depending on their age. So this just goes to show you that there are people out there who are really panicked about this virus. The outbreak is bad, and people are dying, but. In perspective to other dangers in the world, so far, thankfully, it hasn't been that bad as far as actual deaths. So, if you get sick, the chances are overwhelming that you will survive. And the older you are, the less chance you have, unfortunately. But someone in your 30s, someone who's in your 20s, a young person, there's almost no chance that you'll die from this disease. So, while we need to remain diligent and try to keep this outbreak. As minimal as we can, we don't need to panic. We don't need to be buying up toilet paper, trying to break out of prisons, or looting and rioting. This stuff is is just uncalled for. The danger of this virus is the amount of people that it actually can get to, and the reaction to that outbreak. It's not actually individually that scary and dangerous for each person. It's more about a societal impact. This is what I was talking about when I said that in the very early days of the outbreak in China, if the public was just randomly bombarded with a bunch of information about how all this scary, crazy stuff is happening, without any context, without any control put into place, without any plans put into place, a bunch of panic would outbreak. And this is exactly the type of thing that we're seeing overseas now. People are freaking out and actually even sometimes causing themselves to die or get hurt or collapse the economy because they're panicking because there aren't solid plans. And if you look at what's happened in China, there have been deaths, but there will also be more deaths indirectly caused by the damage to the economy. This is something I've talked about before, and so when we look overseas and see people overreacting. To a few cases, to the point that they're actually causing themselves and others danger and harm, you could definitely argue that the reason they're doing that is the government isn't putting into place a very strict, regimented plan of exactly how to deal with this outbreak. They're kind of just saying, "Well, please don't go outside," I guess, and that gives the people this sense of insecurity. And mistrust in the government because they go, "What are you doing? There's an outbreak. How come you're not doing anything about it?" We see this a lot in the United States, and I even saw an article which the government is starting to blame the people for the outbreak, saying, "Oh, they didn't stay inside like we told them to." So this is really showing an interesting side to this concept of individual freedoms, which are pretty important in some contexts. But when you're talking about an outbreak, at some point. Those individual rights have to be lost in favor of the greater good of the society, and lives being saved. So this is something the United States struggles with. The UK doesn't struggle with this, by the way. They've already arrested people for breaking quarantine, and they're locking things down tighter. And what we're going to see in the UK is their cases are going to start to taper, while the United States, which is doing very little, their cases are going to continue to skyrocket. And as always, we need to be focusing on facts, and the facts are showing us that if you start locking things down, temporarily remove some rights of individuals while the virus outbreak fades out, you have a much better chance than the chance that you have if you just let people do whatever they want and hold a little sign that says "Please stay home." Another thing that I've noticed is in the United States, especially. You have the Democrats and the Republicans fighting each other over what to do about the virus, and meanwhile, the virus just spreads and spreads and spreads. 
every couple of days now it's doubling in cases, which means after some time, it will also be doubling in deaths once the deaths start to catch up. So every two days, the deaths will be doubling while they're doing nothing. The outbreak needs to be taken seriously, as China has done, as some other countries have done, as the UK is starting to do. But people shouldn't be panicking. They shouldn't necessarily believe anybody who's telling them, oh, everything's fine, don't worry about it. Especially known mistruthful organizations like the US CDC, who's been underreporting cases by what Johns Hopkins calls up to 98% of the cases going completely unreported. Don't believe those numbers, but that doesn't mean you have to panic. It just means say no to the outdoor activity. Say no to being around a bunch of people. Stay with your family, stay home, and we all have to suffer this economic loss to save lives. We're gonna make it through this, and soon we're gonna look back on these days and remember that it was a dark but very short time in human history. So thanks everybody. See ya.